Chelsea, I've done some things I'm really not proud of in the name of getting good photos. Okay. These are our worst, crappiest camera hacks. The things that have actually happened while trying to get photos out in the field. Because this is not a controlled environment when you're on Machu Picchu and the light is perfect and something goes wrong and we have done some ridiculous things. Some of them worked and some of them turned out terribly. Yeah, we don't recommend you do this. Do we continue to do these terrible hacks over and over again? Oh yeah, oh yeah, but we don't recommend it. You but know what you my know what? least favorite hack is? When people just use social media as their only internet presence. Yeah, because if you have a Squarespace portfolio, you don't have to be a hack. You can just get a professional, easy-made website with a couple of clicks and they make it really simple to do. So we both have Squarespace portfolios. We put our best photos there. It often challenges me to go out and get even better photos. And it's just simply designed, really beautiful and easy to use. And you can get it for free for 14 days if you go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and you can get 10% off with the coupon code CHELSEA. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. You have to spell that properly, and there's a link in the description below. Thanks, Squarespace. All right, let's get on with the hacks because uh, we've committed some photo sins, and it's time to confess. Uh, you know what really bugs me is when I get lens dust on something, there's always somebody who lectures me like, oh, I would never take my lens out in the field. I always keep the lens cap on even when I'm taking photos. I only change lenses in hermetically sealed environments because I keep all my camera gear pristine. I don't. We travel with our gear. I do ridiculous things. We sometimes go out in the desert and I've been, I put gear on the ground because it was the only way to do it. So I'm constantly dealing with lens and sensor dust. Yeah. Here are some of my awful lens dust hacks. And the most common one is cleaning the dust off my lens with my shirt. Or my shirt. Sometimes I see you giving me the side eye, like I'll see you're wearing a rough fabric and you start <laughs> looking at me. I'm like, yes, you can use my shirt. <laughs> so the right way to do this is you're supposed to have a lens cloth and maybe some like special lens spray. And my technique is always like, breathe on the lens. And then my t-shirt or Chelsea's sweater or whatever is yeah. kind of soft. Yeah, you choose the softest fabric around. Find someone in the crowd with a friendly face and a soft shirt. That's your method. Uh, some t I, you know what I hate is when the back of the lens, the lens element is really recessed and you have to like really get your finger in there. And sometimes all you can do is like push the stuff out towards the edges where it's going to be easier to edit. <laughs> um, I do want to say people said this will mess up your lens, that it will the moisture from your breath will like make fungus in there and that your shirts are going to scratch it. So to test this, I 1,000 times, 1,000 times counted, I breathed on my lens and then wiped it clean with my shirt. And then I waited years to see if fungus developed and there was no problem. It was fine. There were no perceptible scratches or flaws on the front element and it was with an inexpensive lens which would have had like a softer plastic front element. So you don't recommend these hacks, but you defend them with your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm just tired of people looking down on me for doing these things. Like, I, you don't always have time to go find a cloth. I mean, yeah, I should just make you a little patchwork shirt out of all of the free cloths you've gotten <laughs> over the years, and then you'll just always be prepared. I've done worse. So your next topic here is sensor dust, which is also a bad one. We've had plenty of cameras where it's like, the sensors actually attract dust somehow. It's crazy, it's like a dust magnet. Sony. <laughs> and we, so you're not supposed to blow on your sensor. You're supposed to use a proper sensor cleaning kit. I recommend that. That's a good idea. Do that. Do not do what I do which is at an event, I took the video camera that they were loaning us and I tried to blow on the sensor and I spit on it because apparently <laughs> I'm five years old and I have no control over my spittle. And then we had to film the entire video with like a spit blob on the sensor. <laughs> the worst part is this hack has worked before, blowing dust off the sensor with our mouth. That's something we've used successfully. It's just that this time the spit got a little crazy. I was excited. <laughs> don't, don't blow. We don't always travel it. with a sensor cleaning kit, but you don't always have time or a clean environment to go do that. And sometimes like you don't have any time. Sometimes you're just a lazy, uncoordinated person <laughs> with a lot of spit and this is not for you. Okay, so something new that we're trying out in our podcast is that we read the first comment from our last podcast video 
And the first comment was actually not first this time, Tony. It was from Punk Rock Maninoff, and it was on our Talent Isn't Enough podcast video. And his comment was, nepotism lives in the art world. That was an insightful first comment. Yeah, I mean, tell people what nepotism is. Nepotism is when things are passed on, like jobs or opportunities are passed on from one related person to another. Yeah, like your uncle owns an art gallery, so he puts your work in a gallery. Yeah. And, of course, if you're the nephew or niece, that doesn't seem like a problem, but it only becomes a problem when you see somebody else's work in the gallery and you realize that maybe it wasn't entirely merit-based how they landed there, and then it can be really frustrating. Yeah, so... Be the first person to comment, make it insightful. We'll read it on the next podcast. And uh, thanks for contributing, Rachman and off. Okay, well, here are two worse hacks. I have also decided I'm just not going to use that part of the sensor when it has a big thing of dust. And so I'll just be like, well, I need to zoom a little wider because I'm going to have to crop out the whole bottom corner here <laughs> because there's a huge piece of dust. It's not that big of a deal with still photos because you can pull it out in Lightroom, but with video, it's kind of impossible especially yeah. if you're panning around. And then the other thing I do, both lens and sensor dust tends to appear really more clearly when you shoot with a high f-stop like f22. So I have noticed it when shooting in f22 and then just been like, I guess I have to shoot wide open for the yeah. rest of this shoot. That's why you want that f.95 lens. You just yeah, really just don't want hiding all the filth. Yeah, the secret came out. That's why he likes that really shallow depth of field. For portraits and stock photography, anything involving like people and outfits, there's just it's just so many hacks. And every wedding photographer, every commercial photographer is going to know this. But we in our studio, we have a collection of clips and ties and stuff just to make clothes fit. So yeah. if a shirt is too big on a model, you can take a big clip and clip it to the back so it pulls a little bit closer. Oh, Tony, this is really where I excel at hacks because all of my portrait shoots are basically just like a very intricate layer of hack upon hack. I have I have made a shirt out of leaves and flowers by just pinning them to another shirt. <laughs> I'm not a great makeup artist, so I've done like really intricate makeup, but it wasn't symmetrical. So I've just cut my photo in half and then just edited it so it was two of the same sides of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, we've done other things. We have, I've made diffusers out of anything you can imagine, like popcorn bowls, posters for school projects. Oh yeah, posters. It'll be like a pillowcase from the hotel room. Yeah. Having to do photo shoots in hotel rooms can be rough. I've uh, found out that the clothes for the shoot were wrinkled, and uh, you know what I'll do? I'll put them in the, the shower, shower and just turn the heat on yeah. and try to like steam it out. Because not all hotel rooms have irons. So many of the clothes in my portrait shoots are not even clothes. They're just fabric draped in the shape of clothing. <laughs> yeah. So, wow, we really excelled at this one. Okay, I never managed to pack enough batteries. I remember in our trip to Machu Picchu in Peru, I was using a Sony A7R II, and I believe I brought six batteries. Six, which was not enough <laughs> because... What is that cocktail that they make in Peru? A with Pisco Sour. A pisco Sour. One night we had, maybe I had one too many Pisco Sours at the bar. And never what I needed to do was to go back to the hotel room and charge one battery and then put the next battery on the charger and do that sequentially through all my six yeah. batteries. Fell asleep. Yeah. Two or three batteries in. And then the next day by noon, all my, I was out of batteries. But I did have a big USB charger, one of those batteries. And so what I had to do for that day was to walk around with my Sony a7R II plugged into a big battery, holding it in my left hand, shooting one-handed with my right hand, because it needed to be continuously on power all day. That's a really extreme one. You really worked around that. I remember with those early batteries, the Sony batteries that didn't have much life, like you were really so dedicated to making it work. Yeah. <laughs> I've done, um, we've been on like cold weather shoots before and I've brought like a couple of batteries and then I just put them in my pockets and let my body warm them up when they die yeah. and then swap them out when it's warm again. <laughs> It'll be cold and you'll be needing to take another picture but you have the battery in your hand and you're like blowing on it like you do when your hands are cold. Yeah. Like, just um, give me a few more clicks. And then also I've had to do the thing where I forget to completely charge my battery and then on the way to the shoot I have it charging with USB-C in the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, I remember, I think we were in Berlin, and we were out taking pictures, and suddenly it started raining. And okay. it's, it's sprinkling, and we're like, well, this is okay, it's not too bad. Maybe just put it under my shirt, I've done that. Yeah, rain hacks, okay? These are ones you really shouldn't follow. But then it really started pouring, and I remember we ended up ducking into a store and buying something so we could get a plastic bag. <laughs> and then we were just carrying our cameras in plastic bags from the store. Yeah, I've tried to hide my camera under my clothes, and then with everything just ends up soaked. You really just need a waterproof bag to bring with you. Yeah, I, I try to do that, but sometimes I forget. <laughs> We're forgetful. This is really, should we be making this just like all of our failures in one video? Don't use this against us, okay? All right, let's talk about uh, a hack for a broken pin in your CF card reader. Yeah, so most of the time cameras don't have these types of memory cards anymore, but we had a 5D Mark II that took regular CF, old CF cards, and if you looked in the camera, there's like 24 little metal pins that poke into the memory card, and over time they get weak because our habit was always to use a memory card reader, so we were always taking the card out, putting it back in, one of the pins bent, and then the whole camera was ruined. But we had to shoot with it, I didn't have any choice, there was no time to send it off to repair, so I found some pliers and managed to get it bent straight and then put the card back in. But then every time I would take it out, it would get bent and pushed down. And I knew it was going to completely break off if I kept doing this. Yeah, like metal gets weak as you keep bending it. So. so I straightened it out, put the CF card in there, closed the door, and then taped it off with black tape to never be opened again <laughs> and for the rest of the life of that camera until we wrecked it in a sudden rainstorm we never opened that door and i had to read the cards the pictures off with a, a usb cable this is how we deal with our problems it's amazing we've made it this <laughs> and far just life. locked it in it was like <laughs> it no longer has removable memory cards okay um the next category is broken right protection so sd cards have a little notch along the side. It's a little slide. Yeah. And if you push it down, it will not be written to. I have no idea why this exists. I don't know anybody who has an SD card that they don't want to be written to. The only thing I can think of is that old floppy disks used to have a little slide that you would slide up or down whether to determine whether or not it could be written to. And if you were giving software to somebody else that you didn't want them to accidentally overwrite, you would put it in the lock mode. And I knew because I'm an old computer nerd that sometimes that lock would break off and you would take tape and put it over it. And then the, can the computer would be able to write to it. So that's what I ended up doing to this SD card that had that little lock lever broken off. I put tape over it, but only, the only tape I had was clear scotch tape. And I guess it must be optical, like it must shine a light through it because it wasn't working. So then I had to take a felt tip pen and try to like color the tape, but that didn't work very well. So I covered it up black and put it in the camera, uh, and it would write. But then every time I took it out, the black would smear off a little bit, and then it wouldn't. It would be right protected again. And so I would so have, have to, to just keep, keep covering. covering it. Yeah, that one's shameful. I'm editing that whole <laughs> one out. We're getting rid of that one. Um, all right, we've also had a broken lens mount. We've had every problem. Well, if you drop your cameras regularly, <laughs> like I do, sometimes what happens is you hit the lens and then the mount of the lens where it attaches to the camera bends a little bit and it'll be warped and the contacts might not connect properly. So I remember we had to go through a shoot where I put the camera into shoot without lens mode because the camera literally did not know it had a lens attached. and then. I couldn't use autofocus and I couldn't change the aperture of the lens. So all I could do was shoot wide open, manually focus, and uh, just kept taking pictures that way. And I then, don't even remember that. You're a monster. <laughs> I probably was too embarrassed to admit to you that that's what I was having to do. I was like, everything's fine. There's no problem here. <laughs> You're just like r filling in the SD card with a pen and... Uh, and the only way I got it to eventually work was I figured out I could put an extension tube on there. And the extension tube somehow connected better than the camera did. So then I could take pictures with autofocus and controlling the aperture, but only with the extension tube, which doesn't allow you, you to focus to infinity. So I was then limited by where I could focus. I just want to say at this point that people offer to send us their gear and we say no. And when I say no <laughs> to you, I need you to understand that I'm doing it for your protection because I 
seen all of this. I'm not rejecting you. I'm protecting you. <laughs> okay. Maybe the worst part is the way I permanently fix that lens. I found oh. one of those extension tubes. You get them for like 10 bucks, so they're cheap. Yeah. I took the lens mount off of it and I swapped it onto the original Canon lens back. <laughs> I just took a screwdriver and disassembled it and swapped it apart from... <laughs> I'm really ashamed of this stuff. <laughs> you seem really it, proud. You're, it totally you... worked. We have even more hacks coming up, especially all of our fix it and post hacks. <laughs> But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is not a hack. Squarespace is a professional website that you can set up that is a fantastic way to show off your work or draw customers to you. Too many people nowadays, in my opinion, are relying on social media. And the problem with social media is places like Facebook or Instagram are great for building an audience, but they can take that audience away as easily as they give it to you. And that happens to a lot of photographers. Um, if you build your own website, Facebook can't take that away. They can't stick ads in there. They can't change it. Go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and get a free trial. If you love it, use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. I'm going to spell it C-H-E-L-S-E-A. Okay, my first fix it and post hack. <laughs> There's a picture in my portfolio of two foxes. And I photographed them with a 600 millimeter F4 lens. And it was a dark and cloudy day and I shot wide open. And they were very close together, but one was a little bit behind the other. And there was no way that I could get them both in focus. So I took pictures focused on both of their eyes, and then I had to stitch it together. It's a lie? It you is. You lied? Yeah, so it's basically me like hacking additional depth of field that really wouldn't have been possible with that big of a So lens. you needed the depth of, depth of field. You couldn't change the aperture to like F8 or F10 because then it would have been really noisy. So instead you just changed focus, stacked the focus. I think that's a pretty smart hack. Another hack is... Oh, he's going... He's, remember our Lightroom book cover? We photographed it with a manual focus Rokinon 85 millimeter F14. Yeah. You were the model. I was the photographer. And I missed focus a lot. Because manual focus with a DSLR is really hard with shallow depth of field. It's just, yeah. it's just not that precise. So I did get your eyes in focus sometimes, but the photo that overall looked the best, where you had the best expression, the eyes were slightly out of focus. And so you did this. You did the post-processing yeah. on it. I stacked that one. I used the in-focus eyes and put them on the best photo. But... It was for the cover of a photo editing book, so that seems okay, right? It makes sense. Though, actually, the whole background is edited. It's, it's highly edited. I know that um, family photographers do this all of the time because they'll get a great photo, except the kids are rarely cooperating. Yeah. So they'll take the best pictures of the kids and then edit them into the overall best photo. It's what happened. Lie. It's an illusion, Michael. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how many times I've traveled and I said to myself, you know what, I'm not going to carry that big heavy tripod. I'm going to be fine. I, I can handle Whoa. stuff. We've talked about this in the Lies You Tell Yourself podcast, all of the lies we tell ourselves as photographers. And my number one lie is that I don't need a tripod. I do need a tripod. <laughs> Absolutely. But we have had so many hacks that we've used to overcome the fact that we lie to ourselves about it. Yeah. And one of them is just taking a bunch of photos, like just focus, focus stacking like crazy and taking a thousand photos and then merging them and editing. Yeah, you can do that with a technique called image averaging. We yeah. cover that in Stunning Digital Photography and our Photoshop book. And uh, another thing I've done is was the origin of the uh, rule of doubles, which just allows you to get really long handheld photos by just using <laughs> massive amounts of numbers. And I just started taking thousands of photos with longer and longer shutter speeds. This is just times when I absolutely need to get the longest shutter speed possible, probably because I want clean images. And I was stupid enough not to have a tripod. Or sometimes you just can't use a tripod. Like churches often, they won't let you yeah. put a tripod down. Whenever you share these hacks, people get really mad because they're like, just use filters or just use a tripod. But we know. We just, yeah, I know. It's like almost like a blessing and a curse for you because you're smart enough to figure out a workaround, but then that also means you can be lazy. Your first decision can be lazy, and then you have to do a lot of work later. You're not kind to future Tony. 
No, you're right. And sometimes when you figure out a hack, the next time you, you're planning, you're like, hmm, last time I just hacked it and it worked out okay. I'll do that again. I could just take a thousand photos and spend an hour in editing <laughs> instead of just carrying a tripod. I have also made little tripods out of, like, been at the beach and, like, found some rocks and, like, stacked them up. And then you're, like, trying to position the rocks so you can get just the right angle. And we've done this with, like, pillows on a bed when we're in a hotel room. Like, just trying to get it positioned just so... Oh, what a hack. We've done stupid things. Uh, kind of the same thing, like, uh, times I forgot an ND filter, but I needed a long exposure. Same technique, like, image averaging. Just, like, taking keep taking photos. photos. We make videos. You have a, a video about not using filters that enrages people, and I think that, I think it's because you forget your filters so often, you found so many ways to work around using them. Mm-hmm. Who are these people who always have the ND filter that they need? Because you, you need different ND filters for different amounts of light, so you need to always be traveling with at least three, maybe I mean, four or five ND filters. I've met other people and they're prepared. Not everyone's <laughs> a freaking mess like us all the time. Okay, well maybe the people out here are a mess and maybe they can relate. Or maybe they're organized and they just want to laugh at us. You can laugh. It's fine. We know we're messed up. I don't know how we made it this far. You should be ashamed. How did two people like this accomplish anything? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have a really, uh, okay, I have a shameful one. Um, I paint in the catch light sometimes because sometimes when I'm taking wildlife photos, I get a nice picture. The lighting is not the best. I can kind of adjust for that in post-processing, but then you don't get that beautiful highlight in the eye that kind of brings an animal to life. And I've learned how to just use Photoshop and just paint that in. Is this some super sophisticated hack, or do you just take a paintbrush and make it white and drop a little circle there? It can be that. <laughs> there are yeah, varying degrees. That's my hack. It depends do. on the day. Sometimes just, I get a little gradient going. Okay. Sometimes I'm like artiste, and sometimes I'm just hack. Yeah, this is going to pass on Instagram. Um, can I say Content Aware Phil has saved me in so many bad situations. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> yeah, I've used, I used Phil a few times. Yeah, uh, th just painting in power lines or I'll take a panorama and I'll forget a section that I need and then there's this big empty spot when this is stitched together the panorama and I'm just like, I'm just gonna let the computer decide what was there. What was there? <laughs> it decides it's someone's face, you're like, Okay, the face is the ground. Okay, you're gonna make four copies of my nose in that particular <laughs> section of the panorama. So this is, for a bad panorama, you just don't take the time to overlap your photos properly because you can take multiple photos, make a panorama, but if you're lazy and you do it too quickly, then you're not overlapping enough to make it a clean panorama. And then you use content aware fill in Photoshop and it's supposed to take all the information around it and fill it in intelligently, but that's not always what happens. You know, I have to say in defense of my crappy picture taking and editing, I can spot an edited photo from a mile away because I know every trick. Because <laughs> yeah, I know the right too. way to do it because I've had to learn it and my, I've taken classes and things like that. And I know the wrong way to do it because I really like to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. So I see what people are doing. Whatever gets it done. In the comments down below, I'd love to hear your own hacks. Uh, if yeah. you want to go ahead and be super judgmental of us, that's fine. That's fine. I'm not reading the comments. I'm going to read the first one, <laughs> and then I'm out. And also, if you want to brag about how organized you are, you go for it. I applaud you. You bring your filters, you bring your tripod, uh, and you clean your sensor with an actual kit. Like, you deserve a round of applause. It won't be for me, <laughs> but you deserve it. And thank you, Squarespace, for making this podcast possible and for giving us two hacks beautiful professional portfolios that get us hired time and time again. If you would like your own beautiful portfolio that looks professional and organized and not hacky at all, you can try it for free for 14 days, no credit card needed. You can even sell your prints there. Just go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea, use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. Spell it properly so they know I'm cool. All right, <laughs> see you next time. Thanks, Squarespace. Bye.